Scrape time? Yes. You have a scrape for us that you've been involved in? Big time. Big, Big time. time. And within the last month. Oh. Fresh. Uh, oh, fresh scrape. scrape. Not from the archives. Oh, no, not from the archives, mate. This is a very, very recent one. I got cabbaged. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Is that like eggs? Uh, no. I, I, I didn't know what a cabbaging was until, <laughs> until, I, until it happened to me. I got cabbaged. I was staying around my friend David Trent's house. Yeah. Uh, he, he lives in Cambridge. Yep. I was doing a very late night gig where I finished at two in the morning yep. and was staying around his house. I had a key to the house to let myself in. A bed in the front room already laid out for me. Oh, I, oh this uh, is potentially a nice situation. Yeah, already I'm quite happy. I w went to the door and there was a post-it note on the front door <laughs> that said, Cabbage Moment. And cabbage was spelled C-A-B-A-D-G-E. Cabbage. Cabbage. Moment. And then a green scribble. It's a kid's, kid's handwriting. Children's handwriting. A post-it note on the door. I didn't know what that meant. Cabbage moment. On David's door? Yeah. On the At front 2 door. Front door of David's house. It's a cabbage moment in kids. Yeah. Hand. So I let myself in. I got in. Wash my teeth. <laughs> got, 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 got in my gym jams. <laughs> which is, you know. What well, do you wear gym jams? Oh, uh, boxers shorts. Alright. Just, just me and my boxers, mate. If you want, if you want to imagine that. <laughs> oh, rather, it, rather not. <laughs> But it is important to the story that you know I was barebacked, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that is important. Okay. Uh, got in a bed in the dark. Bed feels a bit weird. Got up, turned the light on, full of cabbage leaves. Just, <laughs> just full of cabbage leaves in the bed. What? Loads of cabbage leaves in the bed, and then a napkin. <laughs> a napkin, and written on the napkin, it said, You got cabbaged. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha 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 lol 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 from Mick. Mick is Trent's eight-year-old son. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is a chip off the block. Anybody who knows David Trent knows that. That's, yeah. that, that is, yeah. that's classic. So, said that. I had to, I had to process that and, and get all the cabbage leaves together with a napkin and put it on. I was really tired. I had to get, went to sleep and then I had to get up at eight, eight in the morning to get my train. So I woke up, like, really tight. I had to just get up and rush to the train. Went home, and then Trent got hold of me later on and went, did you find all the cabbage stuff? <laughs> I said, yeah. And he went, well, I've just been home, I've just got home, and the family are all really upset, because you didn't do anything back, you just got cabbage and then you left it. <laughs> so, what are you supposed to retaliate with? Well, he said you're supposed to cabbage him back or do something. <laughs> he said, if someone cabbages you, <laughs> you can't just be cabbaged by an eight-year-old. And then walk away <laughs> like it didn't happen. So, but he was in bed. He was in bed. But what were you going to do? He reckons that when I woke up in the morning and all the family had gone to work and school, I should have put the cabbage leaves back in Mick's bed and wrote, "Ha ha, Mick, you got cabbaged." Because Mick came home and was <laughs> and, and, and went, went, went to his mum. Has he left a note? Has he done something? And his mum was like, "No." And then David came home and his wife had to be like, "David, James got cabbaged. He didn't do anything." <laughs> He didn't, so, he didn't retaliate, didn't cabbage him back. <laughs> and so you're not really invited back. Of the rules of cabbage etiquette, isn't it, really? I mean, they haven't been explained before. No one explained yeah. them to me. I don't, know, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can welcome back. Apparently his son's really upset. That <laughs> also, it's too late now to do anything. What can I do? Send a cabbage to his house via Tesco in online? In a jiffy bag. <laughs> yeah, send it. Send a sprout in a jiffy yeah, bag. Yeah, sprout yeah, him. Sprout him. Sprout him. Send a cabbage in a box, like, at the end of seven. Yeah. <laughs> With a face drawn on it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know that's what was actually in the box? Yeah, cabbage. He <laughs> said, you, you got cabbage, Tara. You got cabbage. <laughs> the eighth deadly sin. Thou yeah. shalt not cabbage. Thou <laughs> shalt not cabbage. <laughs> no, ne never, um... Never, oh, what's it, what's it, what, you're not going to do with your neighbour's ox? Never cover thy neighbour's cabbage. Yeah. <laughs> we went a long way for me to say that. <laughs> or cabbage thy neighbour's ox. Yeah, Never well. cabbage thy neighbour's ox. <laughs> what, what do I do now? Wow. Well, I, I, I would do um, a distance cabbaging. Would you? Yeah, yeah I'd do some sort cabbage. of distance cabbaging. What would you do now? I don't know. Maybe, when are you next going there? Well, I haven't got an appointment in, but like, D David says that if I do anything now, it's too late anyway and lame. <laughs> also, there'll be a horrible tension in the air as soon as yeah. you... Because you'll, you'll be eyeing each other like a couple of... Um, but when you got up, had Mick gone? ...waiting for somebody to draw out a cabbage. <laughs> the cabbages in each other. When you yeah. got up, had Mick gone? Yeah, they'd all gone. Gone to work and school. Mick had gone to school. He's eight. Yeah. <laughs> 
David's wife got to work. David was uh, doing some work as well. Everyone, everyone was out the house. I had to rush and get a train. I had no time for cabbaging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. Maybe we should, I mean, what we'll do, I mean, if the listeners have got any advice. I said that on his 18th birthday, I'm going to fill his bed with carrots. And David said, by that point, Mick will be old enough to beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, James A. Custer. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Josh. So, what, what, what is your, uh, what, I mean, what, you've got an update for us, basically, haven't you? Furious, mate. I've been cabbaged again. <laughs> <laughs> Twice. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Do you want to just fill us in very briefly? Somebody needs to bring Susie up to speed, because she yeah, looks bring terrified. Susie up to speed. Susie, a few weeks ago, I stayed at my friend David Trent's house, and I let myself in at two in the morning with my own key. There was a drawing a children's drawing of a cabbage on the door on a post-it note. I got into bed and there were cabbage leaves in the bed with a note from David Trent's nine-year-old son, I've been told to say, not eight. <laughs> <laughs> There's a note from David Trent's nine-year-old son saying, ha, 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 you got cabbaged from Mick. <laughs> and then the family thought it was very odd that the next morning uh, I just left without saying anything. I, 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 I didn't cabbage him back, didn't do anything, and the whole family think I'm really weird for not, for not returning the cabbage. The ca yeah, the what do you think of this, Susie? I am shocked. Yeah. I'm, I'm so confused. Is this a thing that I don't know about? No, apparently. No. Look, okay. if you get so cabbage, do you got a cabbage back? Well, 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 yeah, let, well now there's been a... So, last week, James, you, we said, are you going to cabbage back? There were some suggestions that maybe you could yep. send him some... Yep. You are going to make a postcard out of a varnished cabbage leaf we were considering. <laughs> you were sending him that. Or what was the other the suggestion? Um, uh, getting a PS2 box or PS4 box, filling it with cabbage leaves, giving it to him on his birthday, <laughs> seeing how excited he is about getting a PS4, <laughs> and then seeing him cry when he sees all the cabbages. <laughs> so did you do any of these? No, I was planning it. I was planning <laughs> on what I was going to do. And then, um, he delivered half a cabbage to me in the post. <laughs> <laughs> half a cabbage is more psychologically damaging, you know. <laughs> You know how much it's weirder like it is? Head. How much weirder it is to yeah. open up a box and find half a cabbage neatly <laughs> cut in half rather than a whole cabbage? Is it cling filmed? So you just, <laughs> just delivered to your house? Well, it was delivered to my house, but it went better than I think uh, this nine-year-old boy could have planned because I was out when it tried to, when when, <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> when the postman attempted oh. to deliver it, I was not in my house. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they left a note, say, obviously saying, we tried to deliver this, you weren't in, go to the, uh, post office. And it was perfectly timed, because I have recently ordered, um, a book by my favourite author, and a DVD by my favourite director at the same time, and Amazon had sent me an email saying, we're delivering them to, they will be delivered today. <laughs> oh, so you were really excited. So they're gonna get delivered today, and then I got another email from Amazon in the day while I was out saying, you weren't in. So, yeah, we're going to try again tomorrow. But then when I got home, there's this note saying, go to the post office. It's like, great. <laughs> go to the post office, I can just go and get it. The next morning, I wake up half an hour early because I've, I've, I've got to go to Uxbridge. So I think I'll, I'll plan my day out. I'm going to go to the post office beforehand. Half an hour less of a lie-in. Went and queued at the post office. <laughs> this is wonderful. This, this is, is amazing. So queued up while a guy at, who was at the front of the line was really arguing with the clerk about, about, <laughs> about having to show his ID to get his package. So, <laughs> claims that that had never happened before, so I had to wait for quite a long time. Did quite he worried. get his cabbage? He, he wasn't. A <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone was getting cabbages. <laughs> oh. So and you got um, to the front. What's the front? How was it packaged? Well, in a big, like, uh, you know, like a cubed, <laughs> a cubed box. Is that a thing? A cubed box. But it was way too. Just I was a like, cube. Yeah. A cube. Yeah. I was like, this is too big. For a DVD, you know, yeah. I didn't understand. Too big for a whole cabbage. <laughs> yeah, and the address was all like written on a, on a computer and printed out from Word, <laughs> and not like not like Amazon normally do it. I was like, this is strange. And I was like, <laughs> you normally get yours handwritten. <laughs> yeah, normally Amazon. Uh, Hi, James. John Amazon actually personally writes out James's deliveries. Really yeah. hope you enjoy the book. <laughs> hey, James, this is not a cabbage from Amazon <laughs> normally. So it was in a box, and you yeah. opened the box. Had you twigged by this point? No. Nope. I wasn't expecting to be cabbage so soon after the first one. I haven't even got a <laughs> chance. You were plotting your return, weren't you? Yeah, you I was still planning to, be... to cabbage him back. No one expects to get cabbaged. Not the twice. The cabbage back kid. No, the cabbage back kid. <laughs> <That's really good. laughs> You're welcome. And so what happened? I, well, my curiosity got the better of me before I even got to the tube. I, I, I was <laughs> 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 I was walking with the box, and I thought, I've got to see what they've done here and how, how they've packaged my DVD and book. 
<laughs> it's such a big box. So well, I, can I just check? Was it uh, if it was Amazon Marketplace? You might have still had hope, because or was it? Uh, yeah, no? It's just a big box. But I, I just thought, well, maybe. But that's what I started to think. It's like the doubt where I got it from, and Amazon's like, maybe I have got it from, you know, just a, an yeah. independent seller, and. Hey, they put so much gaffer tape on it that I couldn't get in it from the... So I was in the street trying to get into this box. <laughs> and failing. And then I had to turn it upside down and rip it open. And then people were walking past and saw me reach into the box and pull out half a cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I just look really confused. And there was a note. A note fell out. A note fell out onto the floor. And it just says, Ha ha, in capitals, cabbage. And cabbage spelled C-A-B-E... D G E in brackets again Mick and then he's drawn a bike with an arrow to it that says random bike. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean you've been cabbage, James. What we'll do we'll play a song while you put yourself together and then we'll consider if there's gonna be some comeback. This is Miles Kane. Josh Widdicombe. Yes. XFM. Kings of Leon don't matter on XFM. We're more or less coming to the end of the Josh Whitcomb show, but um, obviously some things to tie up first. Um, thank you, Nish Kumar, James A. Custer, Susie Ruffle. Thank you. Thank you. But mainly, James, what are you going to do about this cabbage? <laughs> <laughs> the main problem here is that last time we discussed it on the air, Trent played the recording. David Trent, his dad. David Trent played Mick Trent, his son. The, uh, <laughs> the recording of us discussing what we were going to do. Good um, podcast hit. And, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> Take it. Take, Take it. it. And Mick got the idea. If you can get maybe Mick to download it separately, that would be great. <laughs> That's kind of like cabbage in the back, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but he got the idea from, from this second cabbage in, from us discussing sending him a box with <laughs> cabbage in it. So I, I'm quite scared about discussing the plan, because if I do, I'm, I feel like it's going to happen to me tomorrow from yeah. here. So, so, I would like... So, are you, you're planning to fill his house with cabbages? <laughs> I would like, well, what's, what, what, one suggestion is for, for this wardrobe of Brussels sprouts, so that <laughs> when, he, when he opens it, it avalanches him. <laughs> um, it's quite hard, but... If you are listening, Mick, and you, I, you know, if we want to, maybe next week, get the uh, other side of the story. Oh, oh, you oh can, wow! Oh, phone in, Mick, by all means. Yeah, yeah. If I mean, if we want to get Mick on the phone next week, yeah, 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 yeah. What his plans are? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, this thing could run on run. All I'm saying is, if you come to the Edinburgh show now, it's the 12th of August, 10 10 30 p.m., <laughs> and don't bring a cabbage. <laughs> 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 missing a trick. You're missing a trick. And now for the second week in the row. Uh, we've been hijacked by the the victim of cabbaging, James Acaster. Hello, Josh. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Very good, thank you. Have you been cabbaged since we last spoke to you? I've not been cabbaged, but I have lived my life in fear of cabbaging. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be you, lying to say. If, if you haven't been listening, um, James was uh, brutally cabbaged twice. Oh. But basically, the first time uh, you went to your friend David's house, there was a sign on the door that said, you're about to be cabbaged. <laughs> You got in your bed, it was full of cabbage leaves. Full of cabbage leaves and a note that said, ha, 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 you got cabbage lol. From, from his nine-year-old son, oh, Mick. Now, uh, secondly... Is that uh, like the vegetarian mafia? That's what they do. vegetarian godfather. It was in the shape of a horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Secondly, um, you then received... You were waiting for an Amazon parcel with slightly too much excitement. It's really excited. Uh, it got delivered, you thought, to the sorting office. You went to the sorting office. <laughs> yep. What did you find? I found a box with my name on it and half a cabbage inside. <laughs> oh, this child's a genius. Yeah. yeah. And half a cabbage is more psychologically damaging than a whole cabbage. <laughs> he knew that. He yeah, knew that. He knew that that would get to me. Well, why has he cut it in half? Now, um... <laughs> Where's the other half and when does it come into me? You are here because, um, we have, uh, I've brokered an interview with, uh, young Mick Trent, the <gasps> nine-year-old cabbager. Oh. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe, XFM. James, you are here because I've brokered an interview with uh, young Mick Trent, the nine-year-old <sighs> cabbager. How do you feel about this? A bit tense. I haven't spoke to him since the cabbaging has occurred. <laughs> he is, he's been cabbaging me and we haven't been in contact at all. I feel like I'm at the newspaper where the wow. Zodiac Killer rang up. <laughs> Just silent cabbaging, like not even, yeah, just not cabbaging. even a message on the cabbage. Well, yeah, the, cab the messages on the cabbage. First one was just right. ha 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 ha, long oh, okay, your cabbage, yeah, yeah. and the second one was cabbaged again, <laughs> Mick. And then he drew a picture of a bicycle on the on the note for no reason, with Classic. an arrow to it saying random well, bike. We what we're going to do? We'll phone well, him up. I'll speak to him without him knowing you're here, James, and then we'll surprise him, and you two can have peace talks. What are you? 
Hello, is that Mick? Yep. Hello, how are you, Mick? Good. Now, Mick, we want to talk to you about cabbaging. Is cabbaging your idea? Yeah. Why did you, how did you come up with it? Basically, I had some cabbage leaves. My mum was saying, put them in the bin. I went to the door and then saw James's room and then that gave me an idea of cabbages and putting cabbages on people's beds. Why did you decide James? Why did he deserve it? It was just the first victim. So is there going to be more victims? Maybe. Oh. Well, here we go. Now, Mick, this is a big moment. Um, we have uh, your arch nemesis, James Acaster, here. Hello, Mick. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing, are you already? <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at the memory of cabbage in me. <laughs> Mick, I yeah. have been told that I can offer, I can offer you an olive branch... Or a cabbage leaf of peace. But guess what? What? It's not going to happen, mate. <laughs> <laughs> never. I will never declare peace until I have cabbaged you back. <laughs> I promise I will cabbage you back one day, and when that day comes, you will know that I am the true cabbager. <laughs> How do you feel, Mick? Hmm. I don't feel anything. <laughs> I think that. I think. Thank you so much, Mick. Um, could I tell you while James um is maybe you know a bit annoyed, you are a hero of the the show and the listeners. Continue cabbaging. Thank you very much, Mick. Goodbye. See ya. Now we have an exciting. Uh, we've got. We've we've had some. Uh, over the last few weeks, some issues with cabbaging of James A. Caster. <laughs> um, if you've been listening, um. Mick Trent, the son of the comedian David Trent, uh, put some cabbage in his bed. He then sent him half a cabbage in the post. <laughs> uh, both times, Acaster failed to retaliate. Uh, he was cabbage twice. We then got Mick Trent on the phone on this show, uh, who told him he was going to continue his reign of terror and that he felt nothing. I wonder what the postage would be on half a cabbage. <laughs> That's all I keep thinking. I, I, I reckon uh, David Trent would have paid the stad. I don't think Mick Trent would have spent his po pocket money on it. But we have no knowledge of where the other half of the cabbage is. We now have, on the line from Edinburgh, with hopefully a cabbaging update, James Acaster, good morning. Good morning, Josh. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yes. Um, so, um... Let, let's move on from the pleasantries. Um, <laughs> a, any cabbaging updates? Uh, using me for my cabbaging updates once again. <laughs> Not, it doesn't care how I am. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a well. There's a couple of cabbaging updates. Number one. This is, this is just a little a little taster for you. This is a, a warm up. Somebody has started up a Twitter account called Cabbage. Spelt <laughs> spelt the way that Mick Trent spells it. Um, so C, C A. B E D G E, and uh, they are sending me photos of cabbages on a regular basis. <laughs> How often are they doing it? So far, I've got two, um, and um, one is of just a cabbage uh, with, with the words "oi oi savoy" written underneath it, <laughs> and um, the second one was a van full of cabbages, like a van that you, you couldn't move the cabbages in the van, and it just said special delivery for Mr. Acastor, <laughs> and a van full of cabbages. Do we think and, this um, might be Mick Trent? There's no way it's Mick Trent, but I, I, I'm, I suspect it's a listener who has decided to take it one step further so that I can't really get away from it. And uh, there are there are loads of people who are liking and retweeting the pictures of the cabbage. Oh. And why I mean, not? I think, I think well, producer Neil did that, didn't you? Yeah, I liked. Oh, it. Yeah. I, yeah, I sent cabbaging a picture back. What of a cabbage? <laughs> <laughs> Try to blame it his own. That, game. that is okay. Yeah, if it, if it was of you, Neil, that would have been really weird. <laughs> you just, sent the photo just of yourself with headshot, smiling, <laughs> black and white. Like, like his casting call photo. <laughs> the sides. All, all the best, producer Neil. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, James, any other updates? I uh, a couple of weeks ago. Me and David Trent uh, went to see Monty Python at the O2, and we brought our fathers with us as well. And me and my dad were on our way, and uh, Trent's dad, whose name is Monty, Monty Trent, going to see Monty Python. Uh, very funny. We had a real good laugh at that. We called it the full Monty. We, 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 we called it the full Monty. It was so funny. And 
David <laughs> David was late getting there. He was, but his dad Monty was already there, and I was um, told to go and find Monty so he knew where to, where to go. And Monty was waiting outside the BO2, and I walked up to him, and he was smiling at me, and he he had a plastic bag in his hand. He went, "I got you a present." And I looked at his little smile, and I knew what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was about to get cabbaged again. <laughs> and this is the first time I've been cabbaged, like, face-to-face. <laughs> like, I, I've, I've had it before when it's, like, in the bed of the culprits asleep or in the post. But this was the first time he handed me the bag, smiling, and I looked in, and he'd wrapped it up like a present <laughs> in, in, in happy birthday wrapping paper. <laughs> and I unwrapped it. It was another half a cabbage, cling-filmed, with a note written by Monty just saying cabbaged. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do? Well, I've got a plan but I can't reveal it on the air because the last time I revealed my plan on the air they did it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, have you seen David Trent? You're living with David Trent, aren't you, in Edinburgh? I'm living with David Trent in Edinburgh. So, I mean, I'm, I think I'm not going to get cabbaged during Edinburgh. I can see him. Right, literally, I'm sitting in front of my computer now. As I'm speaking to you, someone just cabbaged me on Twitter again. <laughs> live cabbaging. A live cabbaging. So, yeah, uh, so I, think, I think that's a, it looks like a, a Ford Escort estate car full of uh, cabbage. <laughs> Well, James, um, we're, we're doing XMM Live in Edinburgh uh, from next Saturday till the Tuesday, where you'll be there. Yeah. Um, we'll get cabbaging updates from you then. Um, until then, um, stay safe. Thank you, mate. You too. <laughs> Cheers. Good luck. Hello. And James A. Castor has arrived. Josh? <laughs> <laughs> you right? Um, how dare you even ask me in such a jovial manner if I'm all right? You know exactly how I'm doing. What's up? What's up? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I wonder what could be up, Josh. I don't know, maybe I got cabbaged again <laughs> by the very man who's meant to be protecting me against the cabbaging. <laughs> well, was, I think we need to go back to the start on this one. Um, you'd been cabbaged. Um, if you, if uh, people are listening for the first time, James um, has a, a feud with his um, friend's son who keeps sending him cabbages in the post <laughs> and leaving cabbages in his bed. Yes. And send writing notes saying you've been cabbaged. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nine-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Trent, if you're listening, keep up the good work. Um, no, no, well, don't. It will keep up the good work with consenting adults. So what? What happened? What would take, take us through what happened? What? I'll tell you what happened. I was in Edinburgh during the last week, and I got a letter in the post, which is very rare for a house you're only living in for a month. <laughs> <laughs> and I opened it, thinking it would be something nice for my parents, maybe, who had been to visit and knew the address, and maybe they sent me a nice little, well done for completing the fringe, James, or something like that. And I open it up, and it's a, I'll tell you what as well, it is the wettest cabbage leaf I've received so far. <laughs> All the other cabbage leaves have been at least a little bit dry. It felt horrible and clammy. <laughs> and there was a note in it, written by Mick, that said, cabbaged again ha 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 but I looked at the front of the envelope and that was not Mick's handwriting or Trent's handwriting and I knew I recognised the handwriting from somewhere I was trying to figure it out and then Trent came in and went did you get the cabbage leaf that Josh sent you <laughs> oh, the well, very person my confidant well, let me defend myself what would you do in this situation I was at your house in Edinburgh right I would not cabbage someone there you go how's that <laughs> Right, and Mick Trent's uh, Mick Trent, the nine-year-old son of David Trent, comes in. Yeah, and um, he wasn't there for the whole month. Let's outline that. <laughs> yeah, he happened to be visiting on the same day as you. He happened to be visiting on the same day as me. He comes in. David goes, Mick, why don't you write a cabbage note for James? <laughs> and Josh can leave it, can give it to him tonight when he sees him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to deliver the cabbage note. I got mm. back to London, found it, thought. I can't let down a nine-year-old boy, so I'll have to send James some coverage in the post. <laughs> oh, suddenly you've got more loyalty to this nine-year-old boy you've met for the first time in your life. What would you... What, what would about you... the 29-year-old boy who's been nothing but true to you? How did you feel when you opened it? Felt devastated once again. I thought I can't trust anyone. He's the person I've turned to this whole time. Been telling talking about the cabbage in, he's been counselling me, he's meant to be getting me through the whole thing. It's like if you went to your psychiatrist and they went, Yeah, I've been sleeping with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's very quick. Your shirt is cabbage coloured. Yeah, <laughs> today. Yeah, it's, it's affected me quite a lot. Psychologically, psychologically, it's awful. I know. I know it's no coincidence that Josh played loser by Beck before I came on today. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I uh, there's no cabbage based songs that I can think of. Um, but um, so what? What's your plan, cabbaging wise? I've got a plan, but I'm not going to tell you, am I? You're the last person I'm going to tell anything to now. I wouldn't let this continue, though. Don't think you have to cabbage because you've been cabbaged. No, uh, Lucy, it's fairly clear <laughs> at this point this that cycle. that is the only way I'm going to end it. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you break the cycle of cabbaging? Yeah, Rise you, above must, it? you must do immediately. I've got to cabbage. <laughs> Oh, I'm not, not cabbage. Lucy, you're very confusing sensei at this point. <laughs> Immediately stop the edge to feather cabbage. But I haven't done a single one yet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you're thinking about it, aren't you? Yeah, it's all I ever think about. <laughs> I think about how I'm going to cabbage this nine-year-old back. <laughs> and now I've got to somehow incorporate a revenge on Josh. It's not his fault. Don't blame the child. Blame that child. He invented the whole thing. Blame the parents. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> David Trent is the perfect person to blame. Maybe you should cabbage David Trent to draw a line under it all. No. Are you crazy? <laughs> this is bring on a whole whirlwind of fruit and veg. You could do what the mafia did and then, like, cabbage David Trent's dad or mother. Like, <laughs> Monty, oh, yeah. Trent. A bit more Monty Trent. Monty Trent. No, I like, can't. He's, That'll stop it. He's a, he's a judge. <laughs> but that's true. <laughs> I can't do that. You can't cabbage a judge. No. Welcome. Uh, James A. Castro is here. Yes. Catherine Ryan is here. Hello. Now, um, it's time for a cabbaging update. Yeah. Do you want to just fill us in, James? Uh, well, well, let's just give the back story. Uh, quickly, uh, James is being bullied by a seven-year-old boy who nine, repeats... Nine-year-old. Nine-year-old boy. It's very particular about that. Who repeatedly <laughs> sends him cabbage through the post or leaves cabbages around yeah well it's, it's bad enough when it was just a nine-year-old boy but it has expanded it has i've been cabbaged by him his father his grandfather well you let's not forget that <laughs> i didn't do the cabbaging you put a cabbage leaf in an envelope and posted it to me mate <laughs> <laughs> i was it was for from mick uh, you did it mate I'm not, let, 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 let's not let's not dwell on who did what. No, no let, let, let's let's not. You you wouldn't you wouldn't want that, would you? Uh, <laughs> I got cabbage. So now I've been getting cabbage by members of the public as well at gigs. <laughs> at gigs. At gigs. So, so what um, happens? Walked on at the second half in Reading. There's a cabbage on stage with a, with a, <laughs> a, a post-it note stapled to the cabbage. <laughs> that said that said cabbaged. With yep. lots of exclamation marks. And what the did culprit. You do? Oh, well, I picked up and said, Who did this? And I didn't even have to ask. The culprit was so delighted with himself. <laughs> it was easy to pick them out of the audience. So she was on the front looking very happy. And then she's like, Yeah, I thought of it on the way here. So I just ducked into a shop and bought some post its and a cabbage. And then I had to staple it on. I was like, Where did you get a staple gun? So, I heard, <laughs> so she did that. I turned up uh, to my venue in Birmingham, went to the dressing room. And in the dressing room was hidden three cabbages in different places. <laughs> <laughs> so one was on top of the toilet with a flag stuck in it that said, you, you just got cabbaged, have a good show. And I thought, well, that's <laughs> probably the only cabbage I'll get. And then I, went, I sat down on the sofa, there was a cabbage behind the pillow. <laughs> and, uh, there was, I, I, Do you know I, who did it? Yeah, it was the venue staff. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when you have to say to yourself in the day, this. It's probably the only cabbaging I'll get. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's not. And it's this is not. probably the last of the cabbaging, right? <laughs> and then um, there's an ice bucket, and I, I open the ice bucket. There's a cabbage inside it. <laughs> and then uh, also recently, my um, my girlfriend lives in New Zealand because you know I know I know how to do an easy relationship. <laughs> I'm pretty clever. Um, she lives in New Zealand, and. Uh, because she's very nice, she sent me a, a package over from New Zealand mm. of uh, loads of like you know, New Zealand treats, chocolates and stuff. Yeah, and also a cabbage. But she didn't. It wasn't. She's not allowed to send an actual cabbage. So yeah, that's in fruit and veg out of New Zealand. So she made one out of modelling clay. <laughs> <laughs> so my first man-made cabbage. <laughs> oh my modelling clay. And, yeah, but it looked. So I, I really love puddings. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it shows how much I love puddings. Is that as soon as I saw it, I, f I smelt it to see if I could eat it. <laughs> I didn't know if it was like made of modding clay or something or nice. Like, like, like fondant. Marzipan. Yeah, cabbage. I thought it was like mm. a, f a fondant cabbage. So, how are you going to bring this to an end? 
I had it planned, I had it in the diary, and I had to cancel it because I had I had a whole thing that I forgot, I'd overlooked. So I'm really annoyed. So I was meant to be getting him this week and stopping it all, and I've had to reschedule. And you're not going to kill him, are you? <laughs> <laughs> if you were getting cabbage <laughs> by progressively more and more of the nation, <laughs> you'd start to think dark thoughts as well, John. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna set the score, whatever the term is. <laughs> I'm gonna even, even the playing field. I'm gonna put that cabbage to bed. Yes. So, but I can't tell you how because as, he listens to the podcast, and as soon as I say how, he's gonna get me with the same thing first. Oh my word! He did that last time. Yeah. By sending me one in the post, so you're I, getting like reverse groomed, small <laughs> <that's my> boy. <laughs> Just legged. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm very excited. So, so we will we will watch the space. If anyone wants to cabbage James Acaster, um, what's your address? Sorry, mate. I, d I just swallowed a whole super whole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't expect to do it. <laughs> I'm really off. Okay. Well, let, let, let's go before. I j Have you just been cabbaged on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> this is X. Now we are all very excited here on the Josh Willicom Show on X of M because um, for the last few months James Acaster has been being cabbaged and he's got his revenge and he was here to tell us why. If you don't know what it is, we have now we, what we would call uh, the story so far. Uh, <laughs> got in a bed in the dark. Bed feels a bit weird. <laughs> got up to the light on, full of cabbage leaves. Just, oh. just full of cabbage leaves in the bed. What? Loads of cabbage leaves in the bed and then a napkin. <laughs> a napkin, a mitten on the napkin, it said, you got cabbaged. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Lol, 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 from Mick. I've been cabbaged again. <laughs> <laughs> I will never declare peace until I have cabbaged you back. <laughs> I promise I will cabbage you back one day, and when that day comes, you will know that I am the true cabbager. <laughs> How do you feel, Mick? Mm, I don't feel anything. I turned up uh, to my venue in Birmingham, went to the dressing room, and in the dressing room was hidden three cabbages in different places. <laughs> <laughs> so one was on top of the toilet with a flag stuck in it that said, you, you just got cabbage, have a good show. And then I, went, I sat down on the sofa, there was a cabbage behind the pillow. And uh, there's an ice bucket, and I, I opened the ice bucket, there's a cabbage inside it. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, James Acaster gets his revenge. Josh Whittaker on Cast XFM. Listen up, it's happening. James Acaster has got his revenge. Uh, let's just see who is in the room for this event. Producer Neil. Present. Josh Whittaker, present. Intern Charles. Hello. Nish Kumar. Never been more excited about anything in my entire life. James Acaster, you've been cabbaged for two months, three months? Yeah. Uh, and what's happened? Finally, Josh. <coughs> Finally, you're looking at a new man <laughs> who can hold his head up high, walk down the street without fear of ridicule because <laughs> the score has been levelled. With a nine-year-old boy. Nine -year -old yeah, boy. yeah. This nine-year-old boy, he knows what the, what the score is now. On Friday, I got... Now, originally, I was going to get in... My friend was going to drive me yeah. to Cambridge. Where, where the boy lives <laughs> but he had to pull out so I had to pay for a train <laughs> so the, the first of the expenses I'd like to point out the entire cabbaging cost me over £100 <laughs> <laughs> that's probably early doors I should point that out yep. I spent over £100 on cabbaging this nine year old I'm still the wow. winner I'm still the winner yeah. uh, got the train <laughs> Got to Cambridge, and, uh, oh, by the way, uh, David refused to help me. Uh, yeah. David Trent is a uh, mixed exactly. dad. Yeah. He's my friend, and he refused to help me, so I had to... He uh, refused to help you bully his son? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely mind blowing. Really bad. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> well, bear in mind, David had guilted me after the first... When I got cabbaged by Mick the first time, David said, why didn't you cabbage him back? You're a weirdo. And had a go at me and called me weird. So I thought David would help me cabbage him back, but he refused to. Instead, he helped Mick cabbage me further another four or five times. Now, I had to instead go uh, sneakily to David's wife and uh, she put a key out for me so that i would be able to get in the house. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> so I arrived at Cambridge. In First of all, I had the conundrum of... I. I 
I had to buy the cabbages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I yeah. knew what my plan was. My plan involved Have a lot. Are you not tempted of- to rent a car? Well, no, I because... I thought you were going to say rent a I cabbage. I think we have spoken about my driving history on XFM before, <laughs> Josh. The last guy wanted to write up a car full of cabbages. <laughs> and that'd be the way I actually go. Cab- cabbaging myself to death. <laughs> Get a cabbage caught under the pedal. He couldn't break because yeah. of the cabbage. Oh, no! It's a Savoy! <laughs> so... The conundrum I had was that I needed to buy the cabbages... Yeah. But I also needed to transport the cabbages to the house. Yeah. So I knew I had to get a cab. One word. A cardo. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had to get a cab. So I had to decide whether I got the cab straight from the station yeah. to a supermarket, yeah. or if I went to the supermarket and then tried to hail a cab with the cabbages. What, you were going to keep the cab running? The what? cab adge. The cab adge. <laughs> I, I went through that process in my head of how you could make a pun and decided against it. <laughs> <laughs> you made the wrong decision, mate. You made the wrong decision. I went in to Tesco. Tesco Extra. Yeah. No cabbages on sale. <laughs> I didn't have any cabbages on the shelves. I went in a co op. No cabbages on the shelf. Yeah, that's because Mix bought them all to send to you. That's what was going on in my head. I was like, he bought all the cabbages. What? Hold on, I'm not at home right now. What's going on? I went to Sainsbury's. Three white cabbages. Five red ones. Not good enough. I bought them all, though. Yeah, of course. You bought eight cabbages? Bought eight cabbages. Did you go self-service or did you go through the... Uh... I, I went to self-service with those, and that's annoying because you have to weigh every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a really slow process while the people behind me saw me like, loading up a bag full of just eight cabbages. This guy is going to enjoy making his own coleslaw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Save me some, make you look passionate. Fortunately, they, they were all XFM fans, so they were like, hey, Caster's getting his revenge. Yeah, yeah. It's really got to this guy. <laughs> then I had to... Then I didn't know where else to go. I needed more cabbages. I still haven't got enough cabbages. So I went outside and hailed a taxi. Got in, I said, mate, I need you to take me to somewhere where I can buy a lot of cabbages. <laughs> oh, oh, no! God. No! <laughs> it's like a cabbage-based remake of the film <laughs> Collateral. Yeah. I, said, I said, I don't know my way around Cambridge. You need to show. So he drove me to a really like, grubby greengrocer. I went in and got, like, five more because that's all the cabbages they have, but they're quite grotty. I got them. Then he took me to a budgins. Oh, by the way, every time I'm in these shops, he's keeping the meter running outside. <laughs> he Did you, he ask you why? No, he just went, okay, fine. What, the most tense moment was when I went into budgins and I had to buy my own trolley. Uh, I had to do, do the one pound thing and I couldn't get the pound thing to work and it's, the meter was running. I, 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 was just like, I was like, oh man, oh man. <laughs> got quite a lot in budgins. After the budgins shop, I had... Uh, 20 cabbages. <laughs> right, I have a question at this point. Do we think that cabbaging is a Cambridge specific activity? Because at no point has anyone questioned why you're buying up all of the yeah. cabbages. At no oh. point has the taxi driver asked why you have 15 cabbages. In budgeons, right. I did get questioned. Right, okay. <laughs> by, by the man in front of me who turned around and said, What are you doing? <laughs> are you having a cabbage party or something? Yeah, again. That's not a thing. And I said, something like that. <laughs> oh, also, in Budgins, I bought five bags of Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mini cabbages. Got in the cab. He drove me to Trent's house. Got all the stuff up. He didn't even ask. He just knew. Yeah, he, he was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. go to David Trent's, yeah? About time someone did this. He's cabbaged me five times this week. <laughs> Let myself in. Went up to the, the nine-year-old boy's bedroom. <laughs> oh, good lord! Then he knew I, he was going to be out. He knew he was going to be out. He was out. Is it what school? time of day was this? This was about. This was like one o'clock, I'd say, in the afternoon. <laughs> uh, then I set about removing all of his belongings from the room. <laughs> Just clearing the shelves and the cupboards, <laughs> everything off the floor, and I've moved all of them. He has a lot of stuff. He has a lot of stuff. He's a hoarder. He's a proper hoarder who doesn't throw away anything. He had rocks that he'd found on the like on walks. I'm not even nice looking rocks. He had, he had a series of um, bouncy balls that he keeps in socks, and I don't even know why that is. <laughs> a full metal jacket kind of thing. But I, I, I got all the stuff, and I, mo- I moved all the other stuff into his parents' bedroom, H- hid him in that bedroom. Then I replaced all the things with the cabbages. <laughs> so I started replacing all the cabbages. By the time I put all the cabbages out, so I kind of like put all the cabbages on the surfaces and then peppered the Brussels sprouts between all the cabbages yeah. to fill up the gaps. Right, okay. 
I still wasn't happy. I went outside and I, I got another cab. I went to Tesco. No. I, I bought 25 more cabs. <laughs> From, from the big Tesco this time in Fullborn. Oh my word! Fullborn Tesco has got like loads of cabbages. Oh, not anymore, it hasn't. Oh. Not anymore. Uh, 25 of them in a big trolley. Got them in, got back to the house. I put the 25 new cabbages. It's a covered the floor. All over the floor. Oh no! All over more of the surfaces. Oh. So it looked like a nightmare. It looked horrible. So many cabbages everywhere. Before he gets... We'll play a song at, before, at the break of when you've set it up and before he gets home. Well, that is, that's, that's what happened. I put all those cabbages out. I blue-tacked my phone to the corner of the bed so it was recording the whole thing. I heard him open the door and I hid. <laughs> oh, also, I should point out, I put, like he did to me, I put a post-it on the front door saying cabbage moment, yeah. which is what he did to me. And I drew up my own sign saying, you got cabbaged, spelt one like he does, with, and then a drawing of a random bike in the corner, which is what he did to me as well. And then I hid. Josh Whittaker. Yes. XFM. The Josh Whittaker Show on XFM. Nish Kumar and producer Neil are here. But and hooks. Uh, the important thing is James Acaster is here. After two months of a nine-year-old son of his friend sending him cabbages, he's got revenge. We've got to the point in the story where you got into his house, you left 50 cabbages and Brussels sprouts in his bedroom. Yes. You set it up, you'd removed all the belongings from his bedroom, you set up your phone to film his reaction, you yeah. heard the door open. Ran away and hid. <laughs> <laughs> Did, at any point... Did you find yourself, before Mick arrived, yep. thinking, I'm stood in a nine-year-old's bedroom that yep. I have covered in cabbages. Yep. What has happened? <laughs> Nish, throughout the entire day, <laughs> I thought, this is the weirdest thing I've ever done, and this might be one of the worst days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> as I was doing it, I was thinking, what has my life come to? That I'm not even looking at the price of these cabbages, I'm just ringing them up because I want to get him so bad. Anyway. So, <laughs> press record on the phone, ran out, closed the, closed the door to his bedroom, ran into another room and hid and listened. Did you know he was going to arrive at that time? Yeah, his mum had texted me saying, just coming back from school now. So wow. I knew he was coming. Was his sister there as well? His sister had already got home and... Uh, she was in on it. Yeah, yeah. so I said, what do you think about this? She went, brilliant. I said, just, uh, just play along with it. She said, no problem. So there's a post-it note on the front door that says cabbage moment, which is what he did to me. Right. So I hear him coming in the door going, and his mum, he's clearly said to his mum, what's that? And she's gone, I don't know, have you been cabbaging again? <laughs> so on the way in the door, he's going, I didn't do it, mum. I haven't done any oh, cabbaging today. Brilliant. I haven't brilliant. done it. And I, so I'm in the room thinking, oh no, he's about to have a full argument with his mum. <laughs> it's my fault. But he didn't, he didn't do that. He went upstairs, and then I heard him shout, what is all my stuff doing in your bedroom? <laughs> to his mum. So why has he been in her bedroom first? Well, that door I'd left open. Oh, so he walked no. past it, saw all this stuff in the corner, and was like, why is my stuff in your room, mum? And she was like, I don't know, have you put it in there? So I didn't put it in there. Amazing. She, she sounds like she knows exactly. <laughs> she's she's yeah. doing really She's well. a real grifter. She's really, really, <laughs> really playing it. And then I hear him open the door to his room. quickly say, we have had a tweet in from little Jason who says, you missed a trick, James. The Brussels sprouts should have gone in the socks to replace the bouncy balls. Oh. That is a good point. But, mate, if you'd seen what the Brussels sprouts looked like on the surfaces, you would not be saying that. <laughs> <laughs> they looked beautiful. They filled in all the gaps between the cabbages so it looked like it was pure cabbage. Now, <laughs> I hear him open the door to his bedroom. And at that point, I thought... I really hope he doesn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> that was all I could think. I cannot believe that's the first time that, that possibility had entered your Before head. Before then, I'd been riding on pure adrenaline. <laughs> I've been buzzing off the fact I was doing it, but then at that point I thought, oh, there's a chance I've gone too far here. <laughs> Luckily, he started laughing. Right. Walked into his room, and then I, I, then I came out of hiding, walked in, and just shouted, shouted "Cabbage! You got cabbage, mate! Count all the cabbages!" Really lauded it up in his face. <laughs> he then, I then sat down, and uh, his first reaction was to pick up his tennis racket and hit the Brussels sprouts at me one by one. <laughs> 
<laughs> really hard. <laughs> so I'm now being attacked by my own sprouts. <laughs> I'm just sitting there taking it. <laughs> um, <laughs> once he got that out of his system, yeah. he was happy to sit with me and admire my creation. <laughs> you know, actually, this is pretty cool. Well done. Yeah. He, uh, he, he gave me kudos for spelling cabbage the way he spells it. Yeah. Uh, for drawing the random bike. He was very impressed with it. And then he was very excited because his friend Toby would be around later. And his friend Toby had been basically calling Mick a liar for saying about he had cabbaged me and that we talked about it on the radio. So Toby <laughs> didn't believe him. So Toby came round and saw that the room was full of cabbages. Amazing. And Toby is, uh, you know, also nine. And um, Mick's showing him. And so Toby turns to me and he went, so you filled a little boy's room with cabbages? And I went, yeah. And he went, real cool, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. well, we're getting cabbage next, Toby, with that so, Just to draw an end to it, what, what happened to the cabbages? The cabbages, I was very worried that I was going to, I was wasting food. So I had a gig in Cambridge that evening and I took all the cabbages with me and I handed them out at the door and everyone took a cabbage home with them. <laughs> <laughs> not, well, not everyone, there was more than 50 people there. Like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, one person went home empty-handed. But, um, <laughs> handed them out and, oh, b by the way, it's really weird when you're giving out cabbages to a room full of people how much people love red cabbage more than anything else. Like, oh, they, really? the audience were really fighting over it. I had Savoy cabbage, I had white cabbage, green cabbage, red cabbage, and um, sweetheart cabbage, which is like a bit more of a longer yeah. effort. And uh, the red cabbage, people were properly fighting over that. Everyone wanted the red cabbage, so. What, so, um, the end of the story. did you explain to the audience what had happened? Yeah. Or did you just silently give them cabbages? Yeah. The I told them show. what had happened and said, I don't want to waste these cabbages. Please right, take okay. them home. Okay. <laughs> it is a beautiful end to a beautiful tale. <laughs> and with that, we wave goodbye to cabbaging. <laughs> Please welcome this week's special guest, Mick. <laughs> so, Gabby, what is Mick to you? This is Mick, and I deliberately tripped him up during the wheelbarrow race at my son's sports day. <laughs> OK, James, how do you know Mick? This is Mick, and for six months, he was my sworn enemy when a practical joke got out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Lee. This is Mick, he's my son, and I'm only allowed to see him every second <laughs> Friday. <laughs> 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 Sorry, no, that's not it. This is Mick. I once took him home from nursery instead of my own son. <laughs> so there we have it. Is Mick Gabby's cheated child, James's feuding friend, or Lee's traded toddler? David's team, where would you like to begin? Well, James, so Mick became your sworn enemy because of a practical joke. That got out of hand. That got out of hand. Yes. So what was the practical joke or prank? First of all, I'll say for the record, before we carry on, I hate this boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nothing but content for him, and I'm furious he's got on this show. <laughs> I just think I feel I can only see him every second Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, the, what was the practical joke, James? He put cabbage leaves in my bed. How did he get in your room? I was staying at his house. On a sleepover? How old are you? <laughs> a few years ago. Yeah, well, he wouldn't have been born. <laughs> he, was, he was nine. And you were, what, 31? <laughs> I was, what, 28? 29? And how do you know him? My, I, I know his dad. He's, he's his son. <laughs> 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 and you were staying at their house? Yes. Why did he put cabbage leaves? Why is, what is, why is that a thing? <laughs> well, it's not a thing until he started doing it. Yeah. <laughs> There's something severely wrong with him. I don't know why he started... <laughs> but you say st this kind of started stunt. doing it. Was yeah. He, what, what do you mean, start, this is a one, a one occasion when oh, you're is staying it? there? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> This is the first of many, David. So, you, so I said got out of hand. I do not use those words lightly. <laughs> so you regularly stay at the house of... Oh, no. Oh. 
This little man does not restrict these pranks to his own house. <laughs> he has no respect for anyone's privacy and will cross any boundaries available to him. I hate him with all my heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he initially put cabbage leaves in the bed you were sleeping in when you True. were staying at his father's. <laughs> Yes. Right, and then subsequently, yes, he has followed you and put cabbage leaves in other places you've been sleeping. No, okay, <laughs> what then? He sent me a cabbage in the post. <laughs> he sent me half a cabbage, cling filmed in a box. I was out when they delivered it. I'd go to the post office to pick it up. <laughs> There was a note inside that said, you got cabbaged again. <laughs> so, OK, so he, 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 he's doing that. Did you, <laughs> bearing in mind that this is a minor, did you at any... It was a major, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> did you at any point retaliate? Yeah, but it took me six months. <laughs> what did you do? After six months of this, well, I... But you say six months of this. Yeah. What is this? There's the initial cabbage <laughs> leaves in the bed at, yeah. at his house, yeah. and there's the posted cabbage, half cabbage. Yeah. Anything else? His granddad cabbaged me to my face. <laughs> what does that mean? He gave me a present. It was all wrapped up nice. I thought it was a nice present. I unwrapped it. It was another half a cabbage wrapped in cling film. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the public started cabbaging me. I made the mistake of talking about it on the radio, and then everyone got the idea, and I couldn't turn up to a gig without there being a cabbage hidden somewhere in my dressing room. <laughs> Well, thank God you're playing safe and not saying it on telly, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, did you retaliate? Did I absolutely did. I removed all of his belongings from his bedroom and replaced them with cabbages. <laughs> That's, I would say, a disproportionate response. <laughs> Six months of my life, David. Six months of my life of not knowing where the next cabbage was coming from. It was horrible. <laughs> I had to go big. I've been cabbaged so many times. Someone had started a Twitter account was tweeting pictures of cabbages on me every day. They said stuff like, oi, oi, savoy. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> oh, no, it's a lettuce! It's a lettuce, you idiot! No, but come on, cut me some slack! No, no. <laughs> I would I say that anyone that. who no. can enjoy that joke about a lettuce would have to be a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, David's team. Is Mick hmm. Gabby's cheated child? Maybe. James's feuding friend? Maybe. Or Lee's traded toddler? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the cabbages, that is a good trick, cos cabbages, when they get warmed up, stink. I also have, you know, been to uh, many a sports day where, where the parents do get incredibly competitive. Mm -hmm. I would probably lean towards Gabby. What about you, Melvin? Which way are you leaning? I believe Gabby, but James is just weird, so I believe him even more. <laughs> your, your paranoid view seems to be the whole country's in on it. Now everyone's sending you cabbages. Every time people laugh at me, I suspect they're my enemy, which makes my job very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> You think Gabby, you think Gabby, but James even more. And uh, David thinks it's me, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, James. <gasps> You're going for James. Mick, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Mick, and I am James's worst enemy. <laughs> Mick is James's feuding friend, and here's the proof that, <laughs> that that is what James did to Mick's bedroom. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mick.